this month last year these villages are facing a drinking water problem scarcity of a drinking water hmm. now you can see the ample of water <laughs> in just in one year just in 45 days <laughs> 45 days of work 45 days work not one year the story begins with the uber famous bollywood star amir khan who has a decades long career full of mega hit movies he hosted a talk show that examined the problems that India faces and became aware of the water crisis that threatens the very fabric of Indian society. He learned that drought could be defeated and built a team of dedicated water stewards and founded the Pani Foundation's Water Cup. The Water Cup is a contest between villages in the state of Maharashtra to see which village could install the most water harvesting structures in a 45-day period. There are many thousands of villages that have competed, and the resulting structures equate to over 145 billion gallons of water storage capacity built in just four years. By my estimation, that would make this the largest restoration project on the planet. I needed to see this for myself, so I traveled to the city of Satara to get a tour of some of the villages with the Pani Foundation's chief advisor. I am here in the state of Maharashtra with Dr. Avinash Pol of the Pani Foundation. We began with a visit to the village of Garavadi in an arid region of the state that receives between 200 and 300 millimeters or 8 to 12 inches of rain in an average year. The village has a large watershed over 2,500 acres. It has a number of ponds that would fill in the monsoon rains, but the upper watershed was draining water too quickly, so the groundwater became depleted. And in the dry season, the village had to bring in tanker trucks full of water just to drink, with no water for crop production. But when I arrived in the village over two months since the last rainfall, water flowed over the roads and green, verdant crops surrounded the village center. We were greeted by a large group of men who would accompany us throughout the watershed to see their work. The upper zones appeared to be primarily grasslands with rotational grazing of large herds of goats. The main structures used to harvest water here are called CCTs, or Continuous Contour Trenches. These are the same structures that we call on-contour swales in the United States. In the month of December, they start facing a problem of a water scarcity. Huh. Every year. Huh. This year, they took a part in a water cup competition. This was the first year. Huh. They treat a watershed huh, in a different areas. You can see the hilly areas. No? The, these are the three hilly areas. Mm -hmm. One is this. Second is this. Huh. Third is this. And fourth and fifth. Huh. Fifth hilly areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From the top, they started the work. We Right now, we are on the top surface area. On the top surface area, we preferred a CCTs. The treatment is a CCT. These are the CCTs. These CCTs made by the machines. It is around one meter by one meter. So CCT is a, I think, basic treatment uh, treatment plan in a watershed development. Hmm. This is the basic. Otherwise, what happens? The drop of water fall on the top area. Hmm. It will come directly. Huh? Yeah. Huh. That's why the rock is get exposed. Hmm. If you create the obstacles, this is the obstacle. No? Huh. Yeah. The water comes from the top area. There is one obstacle. From here, goes in a downside. Huh? There is another obstacle. It also helps to increase the ground water table. Come. See the moisture. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Andrew, mm -hmm. you you just observed the uh, grass in this area. Yeah. Okay. In some part, you feel a dry grassland. Okay. Mm. In some part, but in some areas, you can see a wet grass. This is a wet grass. Mm. Some area. There is a dry grass. Why? Why this is a wet grass? 
because of the moisture. It's the effect of CCD. The 6th November is the last rainfall. Last rainfall date is the 6th November. Yeah. So more yeah. than two months. More than two months. More yeah. than two months. This year rainfall is more, around 500 to 500, 550 millimeter. Mm -hmm. hmm. Otherwise, uh, it it is in a range of 200 to 300 millimeters. Yeah. That's why they are depend on tanker water. No? Yeah. Huh. yeah. Government supplied yeah. tankers. Government supplies to tanker for the drinking water purpose. Right. Hmm. So this this is called the farm pond, which is having an inlet and one outlet in this farm pond we are not putting a plastic sheet mm -hmm. otherwise percolation will not be happened right. huh. so this is for percolation and this not is for, for irrigation for, supply yeah. huh. this is for the percolation purpose there is an outlet of a farm pond once it gets overflows it flows from there oh. hmm. again it will go downside into the cities. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the chain. It is. This is the interlinking. Yeah. <laughs> Few minutes back, so we walk, walk from same area, na? Mm -hmm. But we never see a flowing water because it is undermined. Huh. Hmm. Now it is get exposed. Hmm. And this is the spring. You can watch it. Mm -hmm. This is the result. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the basic science behind it. Water flowing during heavy rains is soaked into the ground in the upper watershed using various water harvesting structures. These structures create obstacles to the water flow, and then the water percolates down into the water table. When we go lower down in the watershed, that percolated water then surfaces as springs and a rising water table that fills ponds and waterways. The water is then pumped from ponds and wells to irrigate crops during the dry season. So now, villagers can grow wet season and dry season crops and also have groundwater stored in reserve for when rains fail. This means that they do not need to import water in tankers or migrate away from the villages to find work when water is scarce. It means people stay in their villages with abundant food and a good farming income. Restoring water tables actually fixes a lot of social problems. When these people have a stable water supply, then they have a stable farm income. This means they don't need to leave their villages in search of low-wage work in India's megacities. The Pani Foundation's water cup competition is much deeper than just water, and we're going to explore that in our next episode, where we visit the village that won the water cup in 2016, and look at the next phase that goes way beyond the water cup, the Pani Foundation's prosperous village competition. So stay tuned.